Hey folks, I'm Dennis. Thanks for watching my video. I've got this raggedy old light fixture on the outside of our house that I need to replace. Not only is it old, but I need something out here that gives a little bit more light. So I bought one of these um, LE Power LED floodlight fixtures. I'm going to replace this old one with this one. Let's get started. The first thing you want to do before working on any electrical circuit is de-energize the circuit. So you determine which breaker is on the circuit that you're working on and then trip that breaker. If you have other people in the house or anything like that, you might want to put a piece of tape over it or shut the breaker box door and put a piece of tape over it. You know, do not open, written on it, something like that. The next thing that you want to do is to energize the circuit at the switch, even though the breaker's off. And then um, look at the light and make sure that the light is off. It is. So now we know that we've got the circuit completely de-energized. The other thing that you may want to do is flip the switch off and put a piece of masking tape over it just again to be safe in case somebody energizes your circuit breaker. That's no guarantee that you won't get power to the circuit though so you, you always want to make sure that your breaker is going to stay locked out. Now most all of your light fixtures are going to have either a couple of knobs or like a couple of screws right here that you got to take off uh, to get the fixture out. Um, this one is pretty old. Well, fortunately for me, they're not rusted. If they're rusted, you might have to take a pair of pliers to them. If you want to salvage your bulb, now's a good time to, or before you take the fixture off, is a good time to take the bulb out too. Because a little jostling around sometimes will break the filament. If, if they're not rusted, a lot of these things are hex nuts. And so if you're, especially if you're salvaging the fixture, um, you can put a socket or a wrench on these little acre nuts and save them, not scratch them up. This fixture is so rusted and in bad shape, as you can see, I'm not trying to salvage it. Usually you're going to find three wire nuts, the hot, the neutral, and the ground, um, which is what I've got here, so that's good. Some people will reuse these wire nuts. I would not recommend it. I would use new ones because what happens to them, particularly in an exterior light, is the plastic gets kind of old and brittle. Now we know that we have gotten the power off of this circuit. The, the final check that you can make when you're working on a circuit like this is if you have a multimeter is to, before you disconnect anything, check your wires, your um, or AC wiring, your white and your black wire, check for any voltage on there. All right, so that fixture's off. Now I've got my my wiring. I'll probably have to do something here with the mounts. We'll see. Let's um, open up this LE power fixture and see what we've got. Warranty card, instructions, cardboard packing. What I'm really interested in is what the what the mount itself looks like. So there's the gasket. A lot of these fixtures will give you um, wire nuts. Oh yeah, there are three little wire nuts in here. And uh, some screws. So here's the fixture itself. Um, I got it because it's got three kind of separate elements to it. And I want to be able to point these the way I want them to kind of light up an area. Now we'll see how bright it is after dark tonight. And I'll show you that on a video. The way this mounts is it's sealed in the back. So you've got your, you know, black goes to black, white goes to white. Green is ground, so it'll go to either green or bare, depending on your wiring. Most of the time your house wiring, your ground wire is gonna be bare, copper. So your green will go to that one. And then the way this mounts is with just one screw through here. So I'll verify that in the instructions, but that looks like that's how we're going to mount it. On this particular model I've got, there's a what they call a dusk to dawn sensor. And apparently it makes it come on at dusk and turn off at dawn. If you don't want that, you just place that cap over it and then it just works with your switch. So that's how I'm going to install mine. I don't really want it to just come on by itself. Um, doesn't really snap down all that well. I might stick a little bit of just a little bit of silicon or something on there to keep it from blowing off. But um, I, I don't like that. I wish it would snap on there better. So we'll see. I'll decide that later. But anyway, that's going to go on there. 
and then in this little bag they do give you four wire nuts there's two each of a shorter and a longer screw that's about a, I don't know half inch screw maybe and about a one inch screw those are for mounting the bar to the junction box and then this is for mounting the this is for the center hole mount the long screw that's probably a about a two inch screw uh, that's to mount the the light to the wall they don't really say in the instructions but that little there's a little silicon rubber gasket I'm going to use that for the mounting screw to keep water from getting inside the box so I'm going to use that here as a as a sealing washer on that on that long mounting screw because this is the bracket for the original fixture so I'm going to take these out in my particular case this is like an external vinyl box so we're going to mount I'm gonna to have to get my wire nuts down inside of here because there won't be any room on the outside to get them which is fine I can tuck all that in there and um, then I'm gonna mount this like so and the gasket will go like so, so I'll make sure I can center all that up now if you've got, like if your wiring's been used already, um, if you've got enough wire there to to, uh, to just clip it off and start over, that's what I would do. If you don't, then just straighten it out best you can without destroying the insulation, you know, like so. You can kind of get it straight and everything, but um, if you got enough there, I would probably just clip it back. A lot of times you can pull some slack out, you know, that kind of thing. I'm kind of halfway in between here, so I'm going to... I'm going to do a little both. I'm going to straighten it out and then I'm going to clip it off and clean it up. Alright, so I'm going to... I'm just going to cut that back a touch. Now, some installations, what you're going to have is you're going to have like a round electrical box out here. And if you, if you do that, there's going to be at least two maybe four threaded holes for your screws and in that case you're going to use these fine uh, threaded screws that come with the fixture because that's what they're that's what those holes are going to take they're standard pretty standard on your boxes in this particular case this is like an external vinyl box so I've never actually dealt with one of these, but the way they've got it and had it installed is they've got the bracket just screwed into the vinyl and it's real thick. I'm just going to take a couple of short coarse thread screws and attach it like that. So I'm just going to, just to kind of keep it out of my way, I'm going to take the gasket and I'm going to put, I want the sticky side to the wall. So I'm going to, uh, let's see, it's going to go on like that. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and thread my, thread it through my wires on the fixture. That way it's kind of out of my way and I can, uh, I can place it when I'm done. But this way I can go ahead and get my wires done and, uh, tuck them and then place this and get the thing mounted so you're going to do white to white black to black and green to ground i'm not going to use the wire nuts that they gave me i'm going to use these just because usually those wire nuts that come with things are kind of iffy so what you do is you take these are almost all uh, fixtures are going to have a f have flexible wire they're going to have stranded wire and most of your house wiring is solid wiring so so what you do is you take take your wires and line them up now you know you've got the power off so you don't have to worry about getting zapped but line them up and then get it's easier to twist the stranded one around the solid one and then take your wire nut and it's got there's like a 
I don't know if you can see that on the inside there's metal and it's like a kind of like a spring um, or like a threaded insert is what it is so you just put that on the wires make sure that both of the wires go inside that metal part and then you twist it turn it clockwise to tighten it on and you'll feel when it if you're if you're holding on to the if you're holding on to both wires you'll feel when it's got a bite on both of them because it'll start twisting them together back up here behind the nut and that's a good thing that's what you want so then the same thing with the grounding uh, with the ground wire you know just figure out how to get all this tucked up in there ideally it's like any other electrical box you kind of want you kind of want ground and neutral to go to one side and you kind of want the black to go to the other side best you can manage that just because it's never a bad practice to have them separated in the box so there we go now we got all that tucked I don't have anything directly under here because I know I'm going to drive a screw into here Now that'll get that securely mounted. Then this gasket's got a hole in it. That's for the center mounting hole. And this is adhesive back paper. So you wanna pull that off like so. Get that stuck on there with the center hole. And then it's got a notch for the bracket. That stuck down that'll help seal that up finish tucking the wires up in there so then you just line your fixture up on that gasket take your uh, take your long screw with that little silicon washer on it stick it in there you need a Phillips screwdriver. And then, you know, right before you get it good and tight, make sure that you got it lined up straight the way you want it. That's nice and solid, and then I can aim these lights the way I want them. So, the thing that I like about this light is that you can take these wings and you can adjust them the way you want. They'll turn up and down. The whole thing will turn however you want it. Check it out. I'm going to go turn the power back on, turn my breaker on, and then try it and make sure it'll work. And then I'll show you after dark what the light looks like. I'll check it out after dark, but I'm, I think I'm going to be extremely happy with that. And I'm going to try to show you how well this thing lights up the area. It's, um, it's, it's about dark 30. So that's obviously with the light off. Here's with it on. It's a pretty good area. This will light up all the way out to the tree line. That's probably um, out to the edge of these trees right here. That's about uh, 40, yeah, it might be 50 feet. And uh, the light's lighting up those trees easily uh, to the naked eye. I'll leave a link in the description below on where to buy this light. If you have any questions about how to install this light or one like it, just leave me your question in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them to help you out. Please like my video and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate you watching and hope to see you back soon. Thank you and God bless you.